It's our KSAT Q&A where we take our questions and your questions to some of the local experts on the topics. And tonight we are again talking about coronavirus. And you saw the huge numbers that we reported earlier in this newscast. More than 1,200 new cases in the last 24 hours. We are pleased to be joined by Dr. Robert A. Frolikstein, who is a frequent guest on this segment. Thank you again for joining us, doctor. And right off the top, what's the biggest change that you're seeing in your particular emergency room, which is Methodist Hospital? It's a lot more, a lot more patients suffering from the effects of the COVID. Um, you know, we're probably, the last few days, I think we admitted 65, 64, 65 patients. And, and that's, uh, that's a big change from, you know, even a few weeks ago. Uh, and for every patient we're admitting, there's probably three, four, or five that we are able to send home with follow-up, close follow-up, and that sort of thing. Are the, are the ages differing as well in people that you're seeing get COVID? Yeah, I think so. I think it is definitely a younger younger crowd than early on in the, uh, you know, in, in March. Um, it's definitely a younger population. And, and that's true of the admitted patients as well, though. Many of the admitted patients are younger. There's so many challenges as our community faces this pandemic, and one that we've been hearing a lot more of is the staffing issues at some of the hospitals. It's one thing to have an adequate supply of PPE. It's quite another to have adequate staffing. What are you seeing at your hospital, and what is your sentiment on that here locally? I mean, I think it is certainly a challenge uh, really across the region. Uh, all, the, all the hospital systems in the, in the city are, are struggling getting enough staff. Um, they're doing a great job and they're doing all kinds of incentives to get uh, people to work extra shifts and extra hard, um, but it certainly is a struggle. It, it, you, you are a big believer in blood donations, just I'm guessing on a normal basis, but especially when you're talking about something like COVID-19. Explain that a little bit. So there's been some uh, very good success treating patients who are suffering from COVID with the plasma of patients who have recovered from COVID. The theory being that those patients have recovered, they've developed antibodies against the COVID virus. And so after all the matching and all that stuff that blood banks do uh, takes place, we infuse that plasma into patients that are sick with COVID. And it's, it's been very successful. When people go into the ER, what are some of the prominent symptoms that they're complaining about? And kind of walk us through the process of what happens next once they arrive. Yeah, so I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a respiratory virus. And so those symptoms of, of any respiratory virus are, are pretty common. It's cough, shortness of breath, fever, achy, chills, sometimes headache sometimes some GI symptoms, but it's mostly predominant upper respiratory illness. The key things that we look for really on, on who needs to be admitted to the hospital are their oxygen oxygen level. Are, are they oxygenating well? Are, there in, are they in significant amount of respiratory distress? There are some laboratory values we look at that, that have some predictive value. It's, it's not as clean as we'd like it to be, but those are the things that we look for to determine who needs to be admitted. And thankfully, most people have not needed to be admitted. How afraid are you when you see that people aren't wearing masks or not wearing masks as much as they should, which is obvious with the fact that we're seeing all these numbers pile up in Bear County? How concerned are you that you or some of your coworkers are going to get sick in the middle of this? Uh, I mean, certainly, you know, we've been lucky and we really have not had much, Ill, no illness among the physicians and medical staff of Methodist Hospital thus far, uh, but certainly it is concerning. We're around uh, people with COVID now every day, all day long. Uh, we're in protective gear, so we're doing what we can to prevent it. Um, but it's also in the community. And so I know that I am personally being extra careful in the community, not just so that I don't get it, but also because I don't want to spread it to anyone. I'm, I'm at a higher risk than average of having the virus and not knowing it yet. So I, I would hate to spread it to someone uh, before I knew I was ill. 
And obviously you don't want to bring it home. So when you get home, do you have a routine that you do? I mean, do you do something special with your shoes and your clothes and wash them immediately? I mean, is there some sort of routine you do on a nightly basis? I, uh, yes, sir. I have a, I do have a routine. I, uh, I have a place in the garage that I get undressed and come in and take a shower before I say or touch anybody. And nobody will be around me until I've done with that routine. Yeah, that's what I want to point out is you are a doctor and this is the these are the precautions yeah. that you're taking to make sure you don't spread it to your family. So when you're asking people just wear a mask and wash your hands, social distance, it doesn't seem like it's that much. Absolutely. I agree. And, you know, I think at the beginning of this, we really did not see a big spike. Right. We were very successful in flattening that curve. And it's it's because of People took it very seriously and they isolated themselves and they wore masks. And uh, now that seems to be relaxed a bit. And, and I think we can get control of it again, though, if people take it seriously, wear a mask, wash your hands, only go out when you need to and stay six feet away from people. That is the hope for sure. Um, any final thoughts, any parting words for our viewers before we let you go? Just that, you know, there's a lot of controversy out there, and I, I don't even try to follow it, frankly, um, because I know that this is a serious illness for some people. Now, the vast majority were not going to be that ill, um, but we can't predict who's going to be that ill and who's not. Even the age thing is not holding up so well right now. Some young people are very, very ill. So take it seriously. Know that you can be spreading it to others before you even know you're ill, and certainly if you're ill stay in. Dr. Robert A. for Alex Stein, I know I've said it before, but thank you very much for being one of the uh, frontline workers for us in all of this. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, take care. We'll be right back.